It is Thursday, May 31st, 2012. Welcome to InfoWars Nightly News. This is Mike Adams, the Health Ranger, filling in for Alex Jones tonight. And here's what we have ahead for you on the show. Tonight. Bilderberg Group openly now says that our military is run by the UN and NATO. They're openly announcing world government. They are the enemy of this country. And more and more, we are identifying them. The answer to their 1984 system is 1776. Full spectrum coverage from the secretive meeting that is Bilderberg 2012. As the elite's cloak of secrecy is unveiled in Chantilly, Virginia. Then, the Bilderberg list is revealed with possible VP candidate and shill for the vaccine industry, Mitch Daniels, in attendance. Plus, Don Tolman, the whole food medicine cowboy, joins Mike Adams via video Skype. All that plus tonight's top headlines up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. Leading off with our top story tonight, Bilderberg 2012 and the Occupy Bilderberg movement. As you know, Alex Jones and the InfoWars crew is there in Virginia covering all of the breaking news surrounding Bilderberg. And we now have an official release of an attendee list. Now that list has some real showstoppers, some eye openers. They include, get this, Indiana Governor Mitch Daniels who is a former senior vice president for corporate strategy of the Eli Lilly company. Yes, indeed, one of the giants of the pharmaceutical industry, the very company pushing vaccines, psychiatric drugs for children, and all kinds of other drugs that claim to treat degenerative disease. Is it possible now with Rubio not appearing on the attendee list at Bilderberg, is it possible that Governor Mitch Daniels is now being considered as the vice president candidate for Mitch Romney. If so, and if Romney were to be elected president, it would mean that the United States of America could have a vice president that has a high position or previously did in big pharma. Can you imagine the outcome of that? More vaccines for everyone. It's national policy. It's what the federal government wants. So more with the attendee list, by the way, look at some of the names that have shown up in here. We've got uh, the, the Prince Felipe of, of Belgium. We've got Mitchell Daniels. Oh, we just covered him. We've got Thomas Donnellan, the National Security Advisor of the White House. We've got executives from, from BP. And James Johnson, the Vice Chairman of Perseus. He is reportedly responsible for leading the selection teams that selected the previous vice presidents of the two previous administrations in the White House. So, if he is indeed there looking at Governor Daniels, it could once again be more evidence that Daniels is being considered for the vice president situation. We've also got Vernon Jordan on the attendee list. Of course, uh, John Kerry, Henry Kissinger. What would a Bilderberg meeting be without uh, Mr. Kissinger there attending? And many others, uh, Peggy Noonan and Charlie Rose, the journalists, of course. Eric Schmidt, executive uh, of Google, and uh, Martin Wolf. Many, many others. The names are, of course, quite intriguing, and you can find the full list on stories and links from Infowars.com. That's big news coming out of Bilderberg this evening. Now, there has, of course, been a media blackout on the Bilderberg meetings for many, many years. Remember when Alex Jones first started talking about it, he was called a conspiracy theorist that there's no such thing as Bilderberg, we were told. Well, now the media has to reluctantly admit that Bilderberg does exist, but they still don't want to talk about it. But that censorship, that blackout, has now been broken by the Washington Times, which has uh, broken the silence on the media blackout of Bilderberg in a story that they have posted. And Paul, jo Paul Joseph Watson has covered that announcement in a story on Infowars.com that says it's all part of, I'm sorry, he quotes the Times saying it's all part of an unprecedented security crackdown now enforced to protect global financiers, banking, banking heads, media and technology moguls, as well as elected officials from the very public whose lives are affected by their decisions. Of course, that quote refers to why there is a media blackout on the Bilderberg meetings. But Alex Jones then has a quote, this year, it's the biggest ever. Yeah, Bilderberg is not only bigger, but there's more public scrutiny on the meeting, thanks to the efforts of Alex Jones and all the InfoWars crew and all the protesters who are showing up.
perhaps as many as a thousand or more showing up there on site to uh, ask questions about this. Uh, the article by Paul Watson goes on to state, expect the post, that is the Washington Post, to only report on the conference once it is wrapped up. Bilderberg relies on big media to ignore their meetings so as not to draw more press attention while the summit is in progress. Isn't that convenient? Yes. It's, it's like having a sign after you hit a speed bump on the road, you just hit a speed bump. <laughs> not that helpful after the fact, is it? In any case, Washington Times deserves some uh, kudos for being willing to cover the story. Now, more on Bilderberg. We have the political party Wild Rose leader Danielle Smith attacks the premier's attendance at the Bilderberg conference. Now, this is news out of Edmonton. Wild Rose leader Daniel Smith attacked Premier Allison Redford on Wednesday for attending the elite Bilderberg conference. This is great to hear because it means that people in various countries who now see their so-called leaders attending this meeting are starting to question whose agenda are they serving? Whose interests do they serve? It's very clear that the Bilderberg conference is not about serving the interests of the people. Otherwise, the meetings would be, well, public. They would, have, they would have full transparency, wouldn't they? They would invite the Washington Post and the New York Times and the LA Times and, hey, why not invite Infowars while you're at it? The number one alternative media source in the world. Shouldn't they have a seat at the event and be able to listen to the meetings? Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that, guys, if Alex actually got to uh, record the meetings and play those? That would be interesting. So uh, Smith, in continuing with this story, Smith said Albertans shouldn't have to foot the $19,000 bill to attend the conference of power brokers because the meeting is closed to the media. Uh, that, that the meeting also will pass no resolutions and Redford won't be able to say what happened or what she accomplished. <laughs> Amazing. Redford defended the trip, of course, saying that Smith is trying to make political hay out of, quote, routine business. Oh, it's just routine that we go have secret meetings and decide on how to divvy up the world's resources and control and dominate everything, acting as a global government corporate run mafia. Yeah, that's just routine. See, okay, moving on. Is the Bilderberg meeting illegal? This is a story by Kurt Nimmo at Infowars.com. Check that website if you'd like more details about this. The question is whether U.S. officials attending the meeting are, of course, in violation of the Logan Act. And the Logan Act reads, well, I'm not going to read the whole thing to you, but it basically says that any elected officials acting with the authority of the United States of America cannot con engage in secret meetings with foreign nationals, cannot be involved in foreign government decisions. This is a, a violation of law, but it's never been enforced, or at least not in recent memory. So if you look at the Bilderberg participant list, you see a large number of U.S. citizens, including U.S. Senator John Kerry, the governor of Indiana, who we mentioned earlier, the national security advisor, and a large number of bankers, business CEOs, and assorted other individuals. Should they be prosecuted under the Logan Act? This is a legitimate question for all American citizens, and it should be a question on the minds of people at the Department of Justice. After all, they're responsible for serving justice, and doesn't that mean enforcing laws against this kind of thing? Makes you wonder who they're actually serving. All right, now if you want more breaking news on Bilderberg 2012, of course, go to Infowars.com. Lots of stories breaking there, almost hour by hour. Great reporting by Kurt Nimmo, Steve Watson, Paul Joseph Watson, Aaron Dykes, and many others. Also, if you want live video from Bilderberg 2012, uh, Alex Jones and crew there are broadcasting live video from time to time, not 24-7, but during the day as opportunities are available, they are live broadcasting. You can get that information, those video streams, at Infowars.com. And what you just saw there was a sample of what you can see live on Ustream broadcast from the Bilderberg Conference, so be sure to check that out. Some fascinating uh, information there. Also, you know what's great about it is the police can't confiscate your camera if you're broadcasting live. They can't take that video back. It's not like they can just seize the little SD card and get your video from you. So that's a pretty cool technology. Good job to the InfoWars crew to have that all set up and working flawlessly. It's, it's really awesome. Moving on, New York plans to ban the sale of large size sugary drinks. That's right. Any soda or other sugary drink over 16 ounces could be criminalized in the state of New York thanks to the incredible wisdom of Mr. Bloomberg, who I guess apparently believes that New Yorkers are too stupid to buy 
two 12 ounce drinks and therefore get 24 ounces. That's right, I guess he thinks New Yorkers can't do math and that the 16 ounce limit will somehow befuddle their minds into never exceeding that amount of consumption of sugary beverages. How wild is that? Now, of course, as the health ranger, I'm against the consumption of sugary drinks and high fructose corn syrup and aspartame, especially in diet sodas, but I don't think that the government should be telling us every little detail about our lives, like how, how big our toilets can be and how, what kind of light bulbs we can buy and how much of this we can drink and how much of that we can eat. And then they want us to take vaccines and drink fluoride on top of that. You know, it makes you wonder if they really cared about your health. Wouldn't they say maybe you shouldn't have fluoride in your water? <laughs> maybe uh, you shouldn't give vaccines to babies that causes them to have autism mm, and seizures and vomiting and headaches and sometimes, in fact, sends them to the hospital to die. So, so New York says they care about your health. Now, they're going to use this to fight their pandemic of obesity, but they don't want to talk about what's in the soda. They don't want to ban the aspartame in the soda. They just want to make sure you only drink this much of it instead of this much. So it's not really, <laughs> it's, it's an embarrassing approach. But here's, here's some of what uh, New York City says. Here's the story out of New York Times, in fact. It says that the, the, the city plans to enact a far-reaching ban on the sale of large sodas and other sugary drinks at restaurants, movie theaters, and street carts in the most ambitious effort yet by the Bloomberg administration to combat rising obesity. And the measure would not only apply to diet sodas, fruit juices, dairy-based drinks like milkshakes or alcoholic beverages. It would, it would, it would, oh, I'm sorry, it would not apply to those things. It would not apply to diet soda. Oh, my God, so you can have unlimited aspartame, you see. You see, that's how it works. And it would not apply to fruit juices, many of which are just refined sugar. And it would not apply to milkshakes or alcohol. So you can, you can drink your way to obesity as long as it's uh, alcohol. You just can't do it with high fructose corn syrup. Wow, this is really amazing. So here's a quote from uh, an industry spokesperson who's defending the soda industry. He says, the New York City's health department's unhealthy obsession with attacking soft drinks is, again, pushing them over the top. This is from Stefan Friedman. Quote, it's time for serious health professionals to move on and seek solutions that are going to actually curb obesity. These zealous proposals just distract from the hard work that needs to be done on this front. Well, again, I'm not defending the soda industry, which does sell poison to people. But uh, let's get the government out of our lives, out of our pockets, out of our bathrooms, and hey, out of our pants, too, at the TSA, okay? <laughs> That's enough of that. All right, moving on. On the financial issues happening, you know, Greece, of course, is in big financial trouble, but now money is fleeing Spain. Yes, in the domino effect scenario that we now see unfolding across Europe, Spain looks like to be the next domino to fall after Greece. Bank of Spain data showed that in the last month, $82 billion with, uh, worth of money flowed out of the country as investors began to almost panic. They began to become very afraid, very concerned that their money was at risk. Now, Spaniards are alarmed by the dire state of their banks, says this article, and are squirreling money abroad at the fastest rate since records began, with credit ratings of, when the credit ratings of eight regions were cut. So the interesting thing to understand about this in terms of the analysis is that as the European money crisis unfolds, a lot of investors are fleeing Greece and they're fleeing Spain, but they're putting their money into U.S. Treasury bills and into the U.S. dollar. So this is creating an artificial rise in the value of the dollar, especially in terms of the exchange rate with European currencies. So it's making the U.S. look like it doesn't have any financial problems, when the fact is the U.S. is just one of the dominoes next down the list. And when it does hit the U.S., and when investors do flee the U.S., it's going to be even worse than ever before. So the question is, how long can the global government keep up, keep up this facade of global fictitious money, fiat currency, trillions of dollars in derivatives debt without the thing collapsing, well, right in their own front yards? No doubt that is being discussed at the Bilderberg Conference right now. How can they keep people fooled for another year or two about what's really happening with their finances? I know. Let's pass a ban on drinking soda. Yeah, that'll give them something to talk about. 
Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Continuing with the financial news, CNBC.com is reporting that America lost 129,000 millionaires in 2011. Yes, the number of millionaires is quickly shrinking, and that doesn't even include all the people who got zuckered this year in 2012 by buying into Facebook and then seeing their investments plummet into the dirt. Oh yeah, zuckered again. Didn't people learn their lessons from the dot-com boom and bust of 2001? I guess it only takes a decade for Americans to forget how easily they get zuckered by the, the for-profit, corrupt, criminally operated Wall Street bankster financial system. It's just incredible. Okay, so uh, the <laughs> total private wealth in North America has fallen by 0.9% to $38 trillion. You know, that number is interesting because $38 trillion is just a fraction of the total global outstanding derivatives debt. So if you think about it, the entire, all the assets of America, the entire country, pale in comparison to the debt liabilities that now hang over our heads. Now, continuing with the financial news, CNN Money reports that student loans have soared over 275% over the last decade. They've tripled. According to CNN Money, well, I guess that's almost triple, 275%. According to new data from the Federal Reserve, student loan debt hit $900 billion. That's almost a trillion dollars in, in student debt. Wow, up from $241 billion a decade ago. And you know why? Because these students can't get jobs. And that's because the jobs have been intentionally moved overseas by the Obama administration and all the other government policies that are intentionally targeting the heartland of America, the industrial base, the job base, to destroy those jobs and make sure those jobs move overseas to the allies of the globalists, to countries like China, which, of course, recently bought up the AMC theater chain in the United States so that any movies that have the wrong message to China won't be shown in theaters. How's that? China now running our movie system. Hmm. <laughs> I wonder what that means for Die Hard 5. Bruce Willis going to speak Chinese? Hey, ni hao, even hun hao ma. <laughs> okay, a um, little, little bit of Chinese for you there. I doubt Bruce Willis is going to do that. Apologize for my attempt at humor. Okay, moving on. Uh, blogger, here we go, CBS News. A blogger, uh, now, there's a blogger named Stephen Cooksey who had a blog in North Carolina. Well, he lives in North Carolina. The blog was on the Internet. That began to offer dietary advice. And uh, the dietary advice was helping people to improve their food choice. Well, the state of North Carolina came after him and threatened him with jail time. Yeah, jail time for giving dietary advice on his blog. And then when we and InfoWars and other alternative news organizations began to expose that story, the state backpedaled and said, oh, we never threatened him. No, that never happened. Let's rewrite that little piece of history. Well, this guy, Stephen Cooksey, has now sued the state of North Carolina, saying that his rights were violated. And uh, he says, uh, quote, when did it become illegal to tell people to eat meats and vegetables? Well, when? Hey, welcome to the new America, Stephen Cooksey. Well, you're not even allowed to say that you're against Al Gore's globalism. Another quote from, well, I'm sorry, Al Gore's carbon taxes. And uh, here's another quote from the story. Within a month of reducing his carbohydrate intake, Cooksey says his blood sugar normalized. He was suffering from diabetes type conditions. He says, everyone who does what I do improves their health markers. Every one of them. It works, he said. But apparently it is now illegal to offer nutritional advice that disagrees with the licensed state dietitians. Oh yes, who believe in pasteurized dead food, fumigated food, irradiated food, fed to dead and dying patients at the hospitals. Yeah, they, they do feed dead, po dead food to dead people in the hopes that it will bring them back alive so that they can become zombies. And we'll be covering zombie stories in just a minute, so trust me on that, it's actually true. Another quote from the story, that Cooksey believes the state's interest stems from a nutritional seminar for diabetics. A director of diabetic services at the local hospital was the guest, and she said, the diabetics should eat a diet rich in whole grain carbohydrates and low fat, according to Cooksey. And during a question and answer session, Cooksey disagreed a few days later he received a phone call from the state agency that someone from the seminar had filed a complaint. Because, of course, there's little nanny secret police running around everywhere in all the seminars saying, oh, if you dare recommend people eat an avocado when they're diabetic, then you must be some kind of nutritional terrorist. 
And so after that, they went after Cooksey, and the rest is history. We don't know where this lawsuit is going to end up, but it should be interesting to follow. And by the way, just as a side note to that, some research we did at Natural News and the Robert Scott Bell Show found that the state had been working with a troll blogger, a PR firm that was hired to post comments about Cooksey that would raise doubt about his story. And we, <laughs> yeah, it's true. Yeah, that, that even hasn't gone public yet, but it's all a PR firm that says they know how to run social media, and they went out to start spreading lies about Cooksey and about the situation. So very interesting how this all starts to happen. The trolls are out there, and some people will get paid. They'll take money to do anything, including attacking people offering health advice online. Okay, moving on to the next story. We have Fukushima radiation now showing up in seafood off the coast of the United States of America. Yes, it is confirmed that it has entered the food supply. Now, the, quote, authorities claim that it's a very low level of radiation, just a low level, so don't worry about it. Yeah, go back to your couch and your Cheetos and your TV remote, just a low level radiation. What, hey, what harm could that be? I mean, it's no worse than... I don't know, having your body fried by the microwave scanners at the TSA. I mean, it's like a low level of mercury in the vaccines. What could be harmful about that? Not a uh, low level of aspartame in your diet soda, and that's still legal to drink in New York City, too. What's wrong with all these low levels of harmful, genetically damaging substances in all your food? Low level must be safe, right? Well, we disagree. We think that maybe your food shouldn't be radioactive. <laughs> I know, call me crazy, but that's just something that I've picked up over the years. I, I think food shouldn't, you know, unleash radioactive elements and, and uh, <laughs> little bits of uh, energy into the electromagnetic spectrum as I eat them. Uh, okay, so back to the story, though. There's a quote here. The researchers tested 15 Pacific bluefin tuna that had migrated from Japan to the California coast and found that the levels of radioactive cesium in these fish were 10 times higher than those found in bluefin tuna from the years before the disaster. So it's up a thousand percent. I guess that's still a low level. You know, if, I don't know, for these government bureaucrats that can't seem to do math or they just change it if they say, well, there is radiation now, but we, we adjusted the level of safety. So now uh, this much radiation is safe even though it's 10 times more than it used to be. Remember the, remember the Mad Max scene where the character there played by Mel Gibson is trying to buy water that's not radioactive and the, and the guy pushing the cart right along there says, <laughs> uh, what's a little fallout in your water, buddy? Yeah, that's what we're going to see in America soon, especially in California. Natural News also covered this story. You can check it out there. It's got some of the, some of the statistics and quotes data from the story of how much radiation was detected in the food supply and then why the government says, eh, there's nothing wrong with that, it's perfectly safe. Now, we talk a lot about how people are becoming more and more zombie-like in America, and sometimes we use the term the zombification of America. Now, recently in Miami, we caught an actual zombie feasting on the face of another man. Now, this is a true story. Uh, this is a, uh, what's called the Causeway Cannibal. I call him a zombie. Because uh, here's the thing, he, he was not only uh, feeding on the face of another homeless man there under, the, under this bridge, and police came up on him and decided, you know, this, this is something they should intervene in, which justifiable. So they shot the zombie once, and he didn't stop eating the guy's face when he got shot. So they had to shoot him multiple times. Now, this is sort of one of the red flags. How you know you've met a zombie is when you shoot him and they keep eating the other guy. Probably a zombie. So, so the cops kept shooting the guy. Um, uh, you know, it, it's insane. But then they blame the bath salts. Now, bath salts is a street name for a whole class of so-called designer drugs. They're not actually bath salts. Bath salts are perfectly safe. It turns out these designer drugs, if you inject them, they can, of course, be extremely toxic. But here's the, here's the thing they, do, they don't tell you. The active chemical in this specific designer drug is really the same as the chemical that's found in things like chocolate. But when you eat chocolate, it goes through digestion, and there are inhibitors of that chemical that prevent it from taking over your brain. But this designer street drug was specifically formulated with not only a high concentration of that chemical, but also with uh, inhibitors to make sure that the drug wouldn't be broken down so it could be delivered right into your brain with very high concentrations. And then, well, that makes you go crazy. 
But of course, you got to also wonder, what's the effect of all the fluoride, all the vaccines, all the television programming, all the radiation from cell phones and other broadcasters, other electronic communications and electromagnetic pollution? What is the impact of all of that? It's definitely having an impact on the zombification of America. But from this uh, story, I, I wrote a story about the zombification. I was talking about the, the zombie apocalypse actually begins in America. And uh, there's a little bit of, a, of zombiness in the culture now. There's a, there's a company named Hornady that's selling zombie max ammo. Oh, yes, there's ammunition for actually fighting zombies, and they're, they're quite serious about that. You can buy uh, zombie targets. And then I talk about some of the signs of the zombification of America. Let's go over some of these. There are more and more people who walk right into cars and trucks while they're texting. Yeah, and they get run over and sometimes killed. People are sleep driving at night. They suddenly awaken and find themselves in their cars in the middle of town, and they have no idea how they got there. Sometimes they even have their clothes on. The complete lack of intelligent questioning about the events of 9-11. Isn't this not another sign of the zombification of America? The acceleration of flu shot propaganda. The rise of a new generation of neurologically damaged, vaccine-damaged children. Yet another sign of zombification. The use of aspartame which, of course, New York City wants to keep legal in unlimited quantities. How about this? What about the guy that was busted in Thailand for having six roasted fetuses in his luggage? So now we've got people seriously eating baby fetuses wrapped in gold foil. <laughs> I don't know. That, that's getting pretty strange. Now, the U.S. Centers for Disease Control has even issued a warning about the coming zombie apocalypse. I'm not making this up. This part is not satire. The CDC on their website says that zombies could take over entire countries, roaming the city streets, eating anything living that got in their way, and the CDC is going to come to your rescue. They say the CDC would provide technical assistance to cities, states, to dealing with a zombie infestation. Oh, yeah. The assistance might include consultation, lab testing, and analysis, patient management, which you got to wonder, how do you manage zombies? I don't know. And a tracking of contacts and infection control, including isolation and quarantine. And probably, probably using some of those 450 million rounds of uh, ammo that the Department of Homeland Security bought. Maybe that's zombie ammo. That's the plan. <laughs> oh, man. Sometimes I got to laugh because it, the whole thing gets too crazy. But coming up later, we've got a vaccine zombie video. This is something that I did a couple years ago. It's a music video. It's a song. We're going to play that for you because it's, well... It's, it's hilarious. I, I, I hope you agree. It's an animation. One more, one more uh, comment about the zombie video thing. Another case happened that I don't think we have a, a graphic for it here, but there was another case of a man. The police broke into his house to arrest him. The guy started stabbing himself in the gut and then started throwing pieces of his own flesh and his own intestines at the cops. Like, get away, and started flinging his own intestines at the cops. Ah. Oh. Okay, that's, that's a zombie situation that we have here. <laughs> and and there, there are more and more signs that zombies are taking over America. So watch for the zombie, uh, the vaccine zombie video coming up. Now, before we get to that, the quote of the night for you relates to, of course, the overall globalization and the acts of rebellion by informed, patriotic Americans. This quote is from Patrick Henry. He says, quote, if this be treason, make the most of it. And by that, he means that if just by questioning the, the, the British Army, if we've already made ourselves enemies of the state, let's go all the way, he says. Let's, let's go ahead and have the revolution. Let's go ahead and take back our country. We're already going to be killed as criminals of the state, so make the most of it. That's what his quote really means, or at least that's, that's my interpretation of his, uh, his quote in history. Now we got the vaccine zombie video coming up, and then uh, also, first, let's talk about how you can help support the broadcast. PlanetInfoWars.com is now up and running. It's a very fantastic, powerful, super awesome social media website. You can post information there. Uh, something like 20,000 members are already posting there. I'm setting up an account there also. It'll be called Health Ranger, and if any of you take my name, um, I'm going to ask for it to be replaced. I'm sorry. I, I, <laughs> I want to have the Health Ranger name on there so that nobody can impersonate me, you know, some PSYOP, COINTEL thing. If you see Health Ranger on there, that's me, and I'm going to start posting some things and participating and uh, helping to support PlanetInfoWars.com. Also, please consider becoming a member of PrisonPlanet.tv. 
where you can, of course, tune into all the incredible InfoWars nightly news, all the other information, the, the feature films, and exclusive video reports, other things, just an incredible amount of information. That's at prisonplanet.tv. And yes, I'm a member there and have been for quite some time. Now, uh, we'll, we'll be back. Well, as we go to break here, check out the Vaccine Zombie music video. And yes, I wrote the lyrics on this, and, and I'm actually singing the song. I do a little rap music on the side. So I hope you enjoy this. Take a look. Social. Info Warriors worldwide are logging on to the newest activist social network, PlanetInfoWars.com. I'm Christy Hightower. This week on Planet InfoWars, follow Alex Jones in the official Bilderberg 2012 InfoWarriors official site. You can watch up to the minute news, information, and live streams, all covering the globalist clandestine convention going on this week in Chantilly, Virginia. Create your own sites of activists and information on planetinfowars.com.
Welcome back to InfoWars Nightly News. Mike Adams, the Health Ranger, filling in tonight. And we've got a great interview coming up for you right now with Don Tolman. He's known as the Whole Food Cowboy. Uh, he's, he's an expert in nutrition and natural medicine. And I wanted to ask him about these zombies and why is there so much substance abuse in America and what can people do to resolve that issue turning to foods? We're also going to ask him about the cancer industry and some of the scams in the cancer industry. So he joins us by Skype video. Thank you, Don Tolman, for joining us tonight on InfoWars Nightly News. Thank you for being here, Mr. Mike Adams, and having me. Appreciate it. It's, it's great to have you on. I know this is your first time here on the InfoWars Nightly News broadcast, so tell the audience just briefly a little bit about yourself, please. Ah, just uh, basically, I am known as the Whole Food Medicine Man. I spent uh, well over 40 years investigating uh, cultures that are long-lived and basically disease-free. I have lectured at medical symposiums. I'm a little bit of an enemy in their camp uh, because I'm against all pharmaceutical drugs. Well, not all. About 98% of pharmaceutical drugs, over-the-counter prescription, and even a lot of different kinds of supplements because foods, plants, are one of the largest keys to our health. And so that's what I'm all about, is helping to spread the message of do-it-yourself self-care awesome That's all right well some people in miami have been doing it themselves but they've been doing it with drugs and uh, street drugs like these bath salts turned one guy into a human zombie where he was literally eating the face off of another guy now we we have an epidemic of substance abuse in america but you and i talked about this the other day that can often be reversed with really nutrition and remineral remineralization can you talk about that don what what really works in that realm? You know, what's interesting is that it was a brilliant ancient wisdom that when people were stressed, when they emotionally were upset, when they just weren't themselves, that they seemed a little off and even kind of crazy. They would literally tell them that they needed to go nuts. And that's where the word nut comes from. Nut in the Latin means light. When you look at nutrition, nut on the very front of it, nutrition means process of light. And some of the highest concentrations of the phytolytic or plant biophotons of nutrition that target the brain and the emotional centers of the brain are what we call nuts, tree nuts. Sure. You look at walnut, it's like the brain. There's a part of the brain called the amygdala, which is part of the emotional center. Amygdala in the Latin means almond. If people would eat almonds, walnuts, hazelnuts, pine nuts, pecans, if they would just go nuts on those and just pig out, it is so fascinating to see how it balances the cognitive process and the neurochemistry of the emotions that are developed in the brain for how we feel and how our emotions affect our behavior. That's literally what the number one thing is to do that and a lot of sunshine. You know, that, that's a really good point, Don, because some of what we observe in America today and even across Europe and Canada, most of the Western world, you know, there's, there's a type of insanity among people. There's also a lot of emotional roller coaster ride going on. There's uh, confusion. There's a lot of fear. And then the government preys upon that fear to unleash their agendas of control and, and enslave, enslavement of the population. At the same time, the government is attacking food. For example, you just mentioned almonds. Well, California outlawed the sale of raw almonds, I guess, what, two, two and a half years ago. Now all the almonds have to be pasteurized, uh, chemically treated, or fumigated in, in order to be sold. So the government is destroying the food that you're describing as being healing to us. That, how much does that concern you? That breaks my heart. It's very, very shattering and to stay up on it and to see even the writers uh, that are paid to support the destruction of foods. They scare the pudding out of people, even tomatoes, they're nightshade, don't eat them, they'll kill you. <laughs> and, and it just goes on and on. They sell millions of books and they get followers and it's nuts and then they go into an industry and target it and shut it down 
It's just, it's terrible what they're doing with the foods. Well, but then at the same time, Don, they say that all of the processed, chemically derived GMO, the pesticide treated food, that that's good for you. So if you, if you drink your dead juice, they say that's good for you. If you have your sugar, you know, the, the, the Corn Refiners Association says all that high fructose corn syrup, that's good for you. No problem with that. Uh, you know, the soda industry says the aspartame is good for you. You know, everywhere you go, all these industries, they have their own chemicals. The GMO industry says, oh, who cares if there's a little pesticide in your corn? You know, just eat that right up. They always say it's good for you. Yeah, it's so bizarre because the food industry is being taken over by the pharmaceutical industry. Even, you know, the Department of Agriculture, it's funded by the FDA, which is funded by the pharmaceutical industry. And so there you have it. And there's really just two kinds of sugars generally that they even know about. There's large sugars, large molecular size, and then there's small. All small sugars are refined and or chemically synthesized like aspartame and things. And when you take that kind of sugar into your body, the molecular size is so small, it crosses through the blood-brain barrier, and sets it into chaos, and the pancreas freaks out. And the two mega hormones, which the pancreas develops and puts into the bloodstream, it starts to produce insulin, which was meant to make you lethargic, lay down layers of fat to protect the nerves because you're in chaos. Right. And, and sugars, chemicals, sweeteners, they all cause that. The large molecules in fruit, which they also classify as sugar, goes through the blood-brain barrier so slowly, it releases glucagon, which gives you energy and cognitive function that is unreal. <clears throat> Fruits target the brain and the emotions in the most beautiful way. Absolutely. They target and attack fruit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's incredible. Now, one of the amazing trends that has happened here at the InfoWars studios is that uh, many members of the InfoWars team, I including Alex Jones himself, including Aaron Dykes and many others, have really been turned on to minerals. They've been turned on to nutrition. They've been turned on to the phytonutrients. They've, they've been consuming products, and Aaron Dykes lost something like 80 or 90 pounds, has more energy, has better performance. Alex Jones has more energy. This whole team here, and of course, I have a background of, you know, I used to be borderline diabetic, borderline obese. The whole team here is getting turned on to nutrition, and I understand that you, uh, your expertise is in helping people un uh, really understand how they can heal themselves. Tell us a little bit about what you do to help people. You know, the biggest thing is that people need to understand that nature's complex, so complex, science openly admits they understand maybe 2% of the cellular functions of the human body. There's 10,000 trillion cells that make up the body, and they understand less than 2%. And when it comes to plants, they understand even less. And what people need to understand is that every plant on the face of this earth has every nutritional component that science has ever labeled, studied, tried to concentrate to put in pills and capsules, vitamin pills, mineral pills. And yet, the way they do that is they grind up rocks and tell you it's a mineral pill. Well, <laughs> right. Cells don't identify with rock minerals. They're fossilized. No, what I, what I do, I take concentrated seawater and I spray it on my sprouts and then I sprout uh, grasses and seeds and they soak up the seawater and that's my mineral supplement that's how I get minerals what, what do you do and I love that you know what I do is uh, I eat fruits and uh, vegetables and nuts and seeds and grains and whenever I go swimming in the ocean I'll actually swallow some <laughs> <laughs> yeah inevitably um, and, uh, and so, no, that's really, really brilliant. Uh, you know, even grass, they now know that grass, just any old grass, any different kind, contains all 200,000 identifiable proteins. Right. Every mineral, every vitamin, no plant lacks in anything. It just has those nutritional components, which they've labeled in different concentrations. Oh, it's, it's incredible. The grass will absorb 90 plus uh, trace minerals and macro minerals, and it'll make them bioavailable. But I want to, you know, before, I, I don't want anybody to get turned off if they're not into health. I, wanna, I want the listeners and viewers to understand why this matters. It's because patriots and those who are true Americans and those who want to be here and be part of the peaceful revolution of moving our society forward, number one, you got to be alive. 
So you don't, you can't have a heart attack. We don't want you dying of cancer or diabetes. Number two, you got to have a presence of mind. Now, how are you going to be able to be aggressive? How are you going to be able to communicate? How are you going to be able to have the passion in your heart and connect with the other patriots and connect with the movement of freedom and liberty if you're sitting in a hospital bed somewhere? That's why this matters, everybody. Uh, your comments, Don. You know, it's, that was brilliant because anciently the five-pointed star was a symbol of the human body. When you stand on both feet with them spread out and your arms wide, you actually have five aspects showing up in the body. And anciently the phrase was sitius, altius, fortius, socius, moneta, which meant swifter mentally, higher emotionally, stronger fish, uh, physically, and then socially based on trust. That was the ancient Olympic creed, and then they got rid of two of them, and they just used Sidious, Altius, Fortius in the Olympics today. Hmm. But in the day of Pythagoras, it was all five. And if people would simply get back to the understandings of life and where it comes from and what supports it, and liberty, our freedoms, our constitutional rights and the civil liberties, and the pursuit of happiness. Originally, it didn't mean to pursue happiness, what it meant was when you're happy, what is it that you personally want to pursue? What is your passion? What is your joy? Yeah. And so to me, that's what this revolution is all about. Well, the other thing, historically, remember that even the American Revolution only, only required a small percentage of the population. It doesn't matter if, let's say, 95% of the population really are zombies who can't think for themselves, who are programmed, who are propagandized, who are you know, just completely mentally unaware. That doesn't really matter as long as we've got 5% who are awake, who are informed, who are nourished, whose brains are functioning so that they can get to the front lines just like the team is doing right now at Bilderberg and they can be effective. And that's what it, that's, you know, nutrition is the key to freedom. That's the point I'm trying to make here and I know you agree with it, go ahead. I do, you know, and that's the 100 monkey effect. It hits critical mass. If 5% of us can get involved in our own self care, knowledge and understanding and a simplicity of common sense in embracing the physics of nature around us because that's where health and life comes from yeah. life doesn't come from doctors and pharmacies health doesn't come from doctors and pharmacies it comes from the autogenic self-healing system and if there's just a few of us that can embrace this it'll hit critical mass and it will spread like a wildfire, and that's what makes me excited. It is. I'm excited about it, too. Where, uh, where do you live, Don? What kind of cowboy are you? Tell us. <laughs> well, I tell people I'm utarded, but not a moron. Because <laughs> you're from Utah? Is that what you're saying? What? Yeah, that's it. I, I live in Park City, Utah. Yeah? Way up in the high up mountains where the Sundance Film Festival takes place every year, the Winter Olympics. Uh, happened here in 2002. Athletes, uh, uh, entertainers in every industry come here all year round. So do you, do you have issue with the Utah government then? You use the term utarded, but what, what do you mean by that? <laughs> That's, I'm curious. Well, what I mean by that is it's interesting because in the state of Utah, they have the highest incidence of teenage suicide. They have the highest use of uh, painkiller addictions in the state of Utah. They have the highest group per capita of people on Prozac, Zoloft, other psychotropic medical drugs. And so as I got into here and moved here because my wife was born and raised, uh, she was raised right here in Park City. And what I love about Park City is different from the entire state of Utah in every way. And that's, that's why I tell people I'm from Park City, California. <laughs> I see. Very interesting. There's freedom here, and, and I love that. And we have beautiful air, wonderful water from our own well, sunshine, 200 and, you know, something like 31 days a year minimum. And, you know, I just love it here. Very healthy. Well, very good. And Don, I got to tell you, what, what turned me on to your information, I know you've got a book. I know you didn't even ask me to plug it, but it's, it's called the FDR, the Pharmaceutical def Desk Reference, but farm is spelled F-A-R-M. That's what I liked about it. It's not a chemical. It's, it's food. Uh, in, in 20 seconds, can you tell us what, that, what that's all about? 
Yeah, the pharmacist desk reference, which is volume three, is a synopsis, it's a summation in common language of all seven of the body systems from the brain, nervous system, respiratory, integumentary, which is the skin and how it's tied together. You know, all seven body systems, the anatomy, as well as the physiologies in a way that people will understand their bodies in such a common sense way that no doctor, no pharmacy will ever be able to lie to them about what they need. Awesome. And you will understand the top 13 foods that are medicinals from nature that target those systems. And then there's another book, you flip it over and go the other way, and it's uh, medicines and pharmaceutical kills. And it's an expose <laughs> out of their own medical publications of the dangerousness and the harm that they are doing and legally getting away with. You know I what, I, 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 I love I, your information, Don. I, in fact, uh, I want to ask you to send a copy of that book to Alex Jones because I think he'd be really turned on by it. I think he would love it. And uh, I'll, I'll contact you after the show to do that, but I want to thank you for joining us today. You've been awesome. Keep up the teaching. Keep up the patriotism. And, and help, help nourish the patriots who are going to be part of this movement for liberty and freedom. Keep it up, man. Thank you, Mike. And you keep up what you do. I love you, man. Thanks. You bet. Take care. Take care. All right. That was Don Tolman, everybody. Website, thedontolman.com. The Whole Food Medicine Cowboy, really cool guy. I hope to meet him in person someday, but I've been turned on to his website and his information. Uh, very, very good stuff there. You know what I love about the, the entire Patriot movement, the Liberty movement? You know, the, uh, the Cowboys are into nutrition now, and this is a whole, this is an exciting movement because for all the reasons we mentioned that you got to be healthy if you want to be part of the future. So that's what we're all about here at Infowars.com. All right, that's the show for tonight. Hope you enjoyed it. A lot of breaking news here. This is Mike Adams, the Health Ranger, filling in for Alex Jones tonight. It's been my pleasure bringing you this information. And stay free, stay healthy, and we might be able to create a better future together. So stay tuned at Infowars.com for all this and more breaking news on the Bilderberg situation. Check out Infowars.com for articles that will keep bringing you this news in the hours and days ahead. Take care. For more than six years, I've talked on the air about creating a social network. PlanetInfoWars.com is in its beta phase. We're just launching it, and I want to invite all of you out there to be in on the ground level. Planet InfoWars is about people coming together, forming activist organizations, getting involved politically, hunting and fishing, gardening, dating. This is a place for people who love freedom to meet and to talk and to write and to post information. And I give you this pledge. We are not going to spy on you and sell your data to the New World Order. PlanetInfoWars.com is free, so people who love freedom can get together. Connect with people who are awake and know what we're facing. Be active. Organize. Take action. Go viral. Create. Contribute. Resist. Because resistance is victory. You are victory. It's waiting for you to breathe power into it. PlanetInfoWars.com sick of the globalist eugenicist control freaks adding poison to your water and laughing as you get sick and die start purifying your water with pro pure my friends i've done a lot of research and the best gravity filter out there bar none is pro pure and it's available discounted at infowars.com its filters are silver impregnated to prevent bacterial growth there's no priming required it's nsf 42 certified optional fluoride filters can reduce fluoride up to 95 percent easy to set up and use Does doesn't require electricity. Purify water from lakes, streams, ponds, and wells. This filter system leaves in beneficial minerals, which is key. Save money by not buying bottled water and avoid BPA that leaches from the plastic. ProPure is the best gravity-fed filter out there. It's what my family uses. Infowars.com already has the lowest price on ProPure. But if you add the promo code WATER at checkout, you get an additional 10% off at Infowars.com. You can also call to order 888-253-3139. Be heard, be active, be social. InfoWarriors worldwide are logging on to the newest activist social network, PlanetInfoWars.com. I'm Christy Hightower. This week on Planet InfoWars, follow Alex Jones in the official Bilderberg 2012 InfoWarriors official site. 
You can watch up-to-the-minute news, information, and live streams, all covering the globalist clandestine convention going on this week in Chantilly, Virginia. Create your own sites of activists and information on planetinfowars.com.